Hello YouTube and welcome to the Super Stobbs Bros channel. I am the Smaz Attack and uh, we're going to kick things off on this channel with a basic let's play. Uh, we're going to be playing a game that is, honestly in my opinion, uh, probably one of the better games to come out of an independent developer in the last few years. Um, it's a beautiful game, beautiful artwork, uh, incredible soundtrack. Very heartfelt story, as well as brilliantly fun gameplay to top it all off. It provides a moderate challenge as well, and um, basically, what I'm trying to say here is, it's going to be bundles of fun, and I'm super excited to have you all along for the ride. We are going to be playing Ori and the Blind Forest. <clears throat> now, if you haven't played this game before why but also uh i hope that uh this little video gives you a chance to experience it and maybe uh you know hopefully convince you to pick it up for yourself because it is it's a, a wonderful experience now we're just gonna play it on normal here just uh for the sake of the playthrough <clears throat> So here we go, this is the opening of the game, and we're this uh, large creature called uh, Naru. So all we can do is do this cute little hop, and uh, walk forward, so that's what we'll do. Uh, I sincerely hope I have the volume turned up high enough for you guys to hear, because it is amazing. Let me know in the comments uh, if I should change that at all. So cute. Ah, oh, look at him get that little stretch on. Look at this. Look at this little bugger. He's so cute. So this is Ori. This is our protagonist. <clears throat> gonna walk out here and look at this look how beautiful this game is it's fantastic you just want to dive right in and live here forever and ever man look at how many trees they've drained of their fruit Oh, you know, this is paradise, right here. Mm -mm -mm. Look at all them tasty oranges. Or whatever they are. So it's so sweet. I can just 
sitting under the trees eating their food. Alright. So here's Ori bringing his little berries back home. Vibes just got the vibes just got real here, folks. <clears throat> oh, oh no. It's only one one fruit left. We got some fruit. Let's get back to Naru. Oh, look at these sweet memories. This game is absolutely beautiful, guys. Oh, look at it. Your heart will melt. Building the bridge. Oh, what's this guy? Guy in the foreground. Aww. Oh, and this is where she ran to get me inside. Naru, he brought you fruit. said this game will make your heart melt and it'll break it just as swiftly
Barely pull himself up. Oh, 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 my heart can't even take it. Come on, Ori. Not much further. Come on. Oh, God, it's Journey all over again. I did tell you that this game was absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. That is spectacular. This is just the beginning. We're in for one heck of a ride here. So here we are. The adventure begins. And you can see now that we've got some UI at the bottom of the screen. And uh, we're free to move around a lot more quickly. A lot more mobility. Oh, look at these sick flips! You know it's a good game when your protagonist can flip. That's what it's all about. Whee! So like I said, guys, this game is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned before, uh, this isn't a blind playthrough. I have played the game before. Um, I managed to get, to almost get 100% on my first run through. Um, and it didn't, didn't take too long, really, but this game is just so much fun to explore. I haven't, however, played the definitive edition, which is what we're playing here. Uh, so there might be a few extra little surprises that we see. Um, which would be fantastic. Um, but anyway, here we go. Moving on. Now, I'll try my best to explain some of the kind of mechanics and features of the game as we go along. Um, <clears throat> so at the minute, all we can really do is run and jump. You can see down there, we have our life in those little green orbs. And here is, uh, you found a life shard. Collect these to restore your vitality. So, you know, your basic health pickup. We'll, we'll leap across here. Here we go. We, you found an energy cell. You can now collect and use more energy. Remember that you can use energy to create a soul link and save your game. So, this is an incredibly important feature, guys, and if you ever play Ori in the Blind Forest, you had better make sure that you remember uh, to create these soul links. Just like that. Now, what these do is, they're your save points, your only checkpoints in the game. Um, so, you can run around, you can play the whole game without creating any of these, and then die right before the end, and you will get put right back here with the same amount of progress you had when you created it 
So it's an interesting mechanic, having to manage your energy to create these soul links. And oh my goodness! Is that a Renoplos from Monster Hunter? You better believe it is. Ooh! And he just got squashed. I'm okay with this. That's what you- that's what you get when you mess with Ori. Yeah. We found an energy sword. Shard. Sword? Energy shard. Um, there'll be no swords in this game, folks. No, we found an energy shard, which replenishes our, uh, energy. Which you can see there at the bottom. In the, uh, it's the blue gauge at the bottom there. So far, we only have one, uh, one unit. Pick up the tiny light. My strength is returning. I am Sign, the light and eyes of the spirit tree. I was lost in this glen when she loosened her grip. I can guide you on your journey. If you allow me to come. But be still. Can you hear that? They must have followed you here. Oh dear. So here's our crash course in Ori in the Blind Forest combat. Now, this game isn't super, super heavy on the combat. Uh, what we have here is our spirit flame. So by tapping X, I am of course using a Xbox controller. By tapping X, we send out these little flames, and uh, you don't have to aim it. It'll automatically uh, lock onto your enemies. So combat in this game mostly revolves around being able to dodge your enemies' attacks while um, basically mashing the X button. Now at the minute, that sounds all fine and dandy, and maybe a little simple, but let me tell you, this gets, it gets difficult. Their lights shall return to me. These words the spirit tree once said. In the glade past the caverns, we'll find him. There's a path up ahead. So, um... You know, you got the little rhyming sidekick here. Which, honestly, I think is adorable. I think it fits the game super well. Um... I'm sure there's, there's some who are a bit like, Ugh, of course it had to rhyme. But you know what? Have to, it's charming. And like most of this game. And, uh, it's quite similar, actually, to uh, Child of Light, if anyone has ever uh, played that before. Um, you also have a little kind of flame that follows you around, who always speaks in rhyme. Uh, but I believe everyone in that game speaks in rhyme. Um, Child of Light, of course, is another fantastic game. And, uh, if you guys think that you'd like me to give that a try sometime, let me know in the comments. So, we gained an ability point. And what we can do with that is, well, first let's create another soul link. Um, but if we get near our soul link, and we tap B, you can see our ability tree here. Um, so in this game, you can find these collectibles, earn experience by defeating enemies, to uh, expand these, uh, to level up these little skill trees. So this first one is about kind of, I suppose, making your traversal through the world easier. The second tree here is all about uh, collectibles and showing things up on the map. And this third one is our spirit flame upgrades. Now this thing can become a, a force once you upgrade it. But um... Oh, I didn't spend one yet. What we'll spend our first one on is the Spirit Magnet. Uh, basically what this will do is it means we don't have to walk into those little pickups to, to acquire them, basically. They'll, they'll fly straight into you. And, uh, which I, I like that in a game. I like it when it just, just gives, you, gives you all the goodies. The goodies will just fly to you. That's what we want. We'll smash through the goop. There's a lot of goop in this game. Get prepared for goop. I hope you're hope you're a fan of goop. 
Not to be misconstrued in any way whatsoever. Spirit wells are ancient structures that were used to quickly traverse all of Nibel. Uh, the light of the spirit wells will also replenish your strength whenever you are weary. So, in true Metroidvania fashion, there are some static save points that will, you know, totally refresh your energy and uh, save the game for you. You can also use these to uh, warp, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, though personally, moving around in this game is so much fun that I almost never use the warp feature. Uh, I would rather run around and just, you know, get to where I'm going on my feet. Because again, in true Metroidvania fashion, this game uh, throws the power-ups at you. And, uh, you know, once, once you've got these power-ups and stuff, uh, just, just moving around becomes so much fun. Okay, so what you saw there is when we get an ability point, which I suppose is essentially like leveling up, everything on the screen will just go kasplooty, kablammo, whatever your preferred term is. Um, you'll, you'll kill everything on screen and you'll, you know, you'll completely replenish your health and energy. Uh, so this is a keystone. Keystones are used to open spirit gates. Remember that each spirit gate will require a different number of keystones. So a keystone does exactly what it says. It's a stone that functions like a key. And uh, you'll see in a minute we'll find a, what's called a, a spirit gate, I think? Or no? I don't know. W whatever that was. We'll find one of these doors and it'll require us to have these keystones. Now, the, the usual number is four. Uh, and lucky for us that we can always find them fairly close to the door. Uh, this spirit gate blocks us. They were built for protection before the days of decay. The required keystones must be nearby. To reach the spirit tree, we must cast... We must pass the spirit caverns that lie beyond this gate. We're way ahead of you, sign. We've already got both of those. So let's open up the door. Let. Me. In. Look at him just stroking the door. Oh, Ori is so cute. Look at him. Look at his little... Oh, yeah, do a little Ori dance. Alright, moving on. Oh! So as you can see, at the minute, the game isn't too, uh, isn't too difficult in terms of combat. You mostly just have these little slimes who like shooting stuff at you. Shooting their goop, their spiky goop at you. Um, now this game, guys, require, uh, rewards, rather, um, exploration, uh, immensely. So we were told to go to the spirit caverns, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go explore. <laughs> And what exploring in this game lets you do is, well, A, find areas you can't get to yet. But it also is likely to give you tons of goodies. Now, Ori in the Blind Forest, oh, it's not a particularly long game. Uh, so you're going to want to spend the time, you know, looking for these goodies to make the game easier for you. Like, here we go. You found a life cell. You can now retain more vitality. Find more life cells to increase your survivability. So as well as that, you know, it'll make the game easier. You'll find experience, what things to level up, uh, things to give you more energy and health. Uh, and that's, that's, that's what you want. So by all means, go exploring. Be a rebel. If the game tells you to go somewhere, say, No nah, man, I ain't doing that. I'm way too cool for that, bro. And if anyone tells you you're not cool because you're playing a game with the most adorable protagonist in history, well, I don't know what to say to you, because they're wrong. You tell that person to go play Ori in the Blind Forest and grow a heart, because this game is just, it's so amazing. And it just looks beautiful, too. Blast all this goop out of our way so that we can uh, get through here. Blast the goo! Did 
take this. Actually, guys. Oh, no, never mind. We've, we've fallen down now. There's no going back. Ouch. Yeah, you gotta watch out. The environment will try to kill you. You see that little spiky thing up there? You gotta watch out for them. Uh, sometimes obstacles in this game are a little hard to see. But most things that are dangerous to you will be this bright purple color. Enemies. Little balls of spiky goo. All of it. Um... I don't know what the developers had against the color purple, but, uh... They definitely had... They definitely had something against it. Because that is the color of death in the game first. So here we go, we got another ability point. So let's, uh, go to this tree and... Oh, we have two! So, what we'll do... Is we'll take quick flame. Rekindle is also very useful. We'll take that as well. And what that means is, if you create a soul link here, go do something over here, and then come back, you can hold B and revive your soul link, which will save the game again, and that requires no energy. So it's very useful to have. Again, guys, I cannot reiterate enough uh, how important it is to create those soul links. So there were those that turned to hope. And she ravaged and killed. So we're hearing more about this she again. I wonder who it is. The light of the spirit tree lives in all of us. It's the reason we're alive. It's the reason we grew. When he called out to find you many years past, we were attacked, killed, and wounded by our foe. That's meant to be the other way around, but my apologies. Now these ancestral trees are all that's left behind. Come closer now and feel the light of Phil, the spirit inside. So guys, if you've ever played a Metroid game, these are essentially your Chozo statues that give you a new power or upgrade. Um, but they're these things called spirit trees. Here we go, we've learned to wall jump. To use this ability, do the basic wall jump stuff. So here you can see we can also just climb up walls. Uh, we don't have to bounce between two walls. We can just jump up walls and climb up them. Uh, it's adorable and functional. So there we go, we have another energy cell as well now. So we'll create another save link. We'll save our game now that we have this ability. So now you can see just how much more access we already have to the world. As you can imagine, because this game is focused mostly on platforming, not so much on combat, you can imagine how mobile will be, uh, each, how much more mobile will be, rather, each time we pick up one of these, uh, each time we absorb the light from one of these spirit trees. Um, like I said, guys, moving around in this game is just so much fun. Um, there's really, there's really nothing better. Oh dear, monkeys. So I'll put another spirit link down, just in case. And oh! See that guy in the foreground? Spooky. Now Ori, this isn't an ability he learns later in the game. I guess his species just have the relative strength of an ant, because look at him push this boulder. It's, it's got to be at least five times his size. Oh, here's another thing, guys. If you're playing this game, again, explore everywhere, because look at this. See that? That little hidden area? There's millions of those in this game. Well, not millions, but there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, and you really got to keep an eye out for things like that. Ooh. We're just about out of time here, guys, so let me push this rock through these spinning sticks of death real quick. Go, Ori, go! And, uh, we'll end the video. Oh! oh. That was scary. 
That was the hop on the rock, and there we go. So always be prepared to look in nook and crannies if you're playing uh, Ori in the Blind Forest. You probably won't be going for 100% on this playthrough. But uh, any time that we see we can uh, get a little... Oh, ouch. Anytime we see that there's some goodies to collect, we'll absolutely do so. So this is a map stone fragment. Return this to a map stone to unlock a new area of the map. Or a new area map, rather. Um, so you can see what that switch did is it dropped this little plank down here. And that's good for us because what that means is we don't have to go through that whole ordeal of spinning death traps to get back up to here in case we were to fall down. He's still down there. Oh! Jesus. Oh god, he's, he's, he's chasing. <laughs> Take that! Mess not with the Ori, lest you... Lest you wish for pain. So let's uh, explore down here, see what there is. Oh, and here we go. Here's the map stone. Ori, this is a map stone. One of the many ancient markers created to chart the forest of Nibble as it grew. There's a piece missing. If we can find the map stone fragment, we might be able to repair it. Once again, sign, we're way ahead of you. So what we'll do is... Oh, we'll grab this uh, keystone, because it's here. And we'll slap this map stone in here. And as you can see... Wham! Look at that. That's a lot of map for just uh, for just a little a little stone, and you can see if we zoom oh if we uh, if we pan the camera around this game's map is huge. There is so much to explore and do in Ori and the Blind Forest. Um, that really once you start playing, there's no reason to stop. Um, it's just. It's just so much fun. Uh, anyway, guys, I think I'll end our first video here. I hope you're liking the series. I hope you're uh, enjoying Ori in the Blind Forest. I certainly know I am. Uh, despite this being my however many if time playing. Uh, I'm having tons of fun. I hope you guys are too. I hope you like the video. If you did like the video, leave a like, leave a comment. If you're feeling generous, Hey, even drop a subscribe. The Super Stobbs Bros will be constantly giving you new content. Um, so, you know, if you want to see more, leave a subscribe. Stay tuned. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching.